Here's a sound we're all familiar with. Crackles or burbles when you lift off throttle. Some are nice and some are annoying. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the so-called burble tune, how it works, why it works, and how you can tune any car to get burbles on diesel too. This is MZ and this is Burble Tune Explained. There are a few ways a car can make the burble or the crackle sound on diesel, but almost all of them are caused by a single thing, and that's having unburned fuel in the exhaust system. And like everything else in car culture, it stems from motorsports. Race engines are always pushed to their absolute limits, and they spend the majority of their time in the high revs or near the red line, which means lots and lots of heat. So cooling is a big deal when it comes to race engines. And the engineers try to do everything in their power to keep these screaming engines cool. Now you have your typical methods of cooling, of course, like the radiator cooling down the water that goes through the engine, oil coolers, and a whole bunch of other regular cooling techniques. But they can only do so much and you can use all the help you can get. So what the engineers came up with was cooling the cylinders with fuel. Yep, you heard that right. Fuel. Here's how it works. The driver would lift off the throttle near the braking zone or close to a turn. In that time, the air fuel ratio doesn't really matter since you're just coasting. So the race engineers would program the ECU to spray extra fuel into the cylinder. Since the fuel is cooler, it would absorb some of the heat from the cylinder and vaporize, which lowers the cylinder temperatures by a little bit. They would also program the ECU to severely retard the ignition timing so the spark would fire off way later. That way most of the fuel vapor would remain unburnt keeping the cylinder temperatures in check. The unburnt fuel vapor would eventually ignite in the extreme heat of the exhaust system and naturally you would get Now some of you are pretty smart and might think isn't that just like anti-lag? You'd be kind of right but not entirely. Smart thinking though. I like it. Well done. It's almost the same idea, but this is done to cool the cylinder. Whereas anti-lag is trying to keep your turbo spinning. It doesn't really care about cooling. In fact, sometimes they add more heat. So it's not the same tune. Now, since every single person who likes cars wants their car to look and sound like a race car, we heard that sound and thought, I want that same sound for my daily. Not realizing that little drive to the grocery store or the school isn't gonna even get your engine hot enough to make it work. But it didn't take long till people came up with janky flash tunes and piggyback systems just to produce that same sound. Manufacturers took note of that and they also designed cars pre-programmed and tuned from factory to burble and crackle. Nowadays, you can take pretty much any car to a tuner and they'll throw on a burble tune for you. They might judge you if you're over 16 though. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Am I? Nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But how do you exactly tune for it? After all, you're probably watching this video just for that. It's a very simple tune actually. And like I said, you can pretty much do it to any car, given that you have electronic ignition or some sort of way to control your timing curve. But before I get knee deep into the details, you should really go watch the video I made about ECU tuning, just so you're caught up and you fully understand what I'm talking about. But to give you some context, the ECU or the electronic control unit pretty much controls everything. But you already knew that because you went and watched that video, right? And to control your fueling and ignition timing to give you the best performance and efficiency, it uses a bunch of lookup tables. One of them is the fuel or the AFR table that controls how much fuel gets injected at any given engine speed and load. There's also the ignition table that controls the timing of the spark or the ignition timing. Again, if you're confused, go watch my ECU tuning video and don't be confused. Now the crackles and burbles are supposed to happen when you lift off throttle right after accelerating or revving. So your engine's gonna be at high RPMs but at very low engine loads. And that means you will only be messing with this end of the table. Remember, the goal is to have incomplete combustion and unburnt fuel in the exhaust system. So we need to tell the ECU to retard the ignition timing for low engine load and everything above, let's say 2000 RPM. This means the spark will go off way later when the piston is closer to top that center. Now that you have the spark going off later, you need to change the air fuel ratio to add a bit of fuel. So you go in the AFR table or the fuel map and add fuel to the same cells that you changed in the ignition table. And that is it. Now you have way too much fuel in the combustion chamber that doesn't have enough air 
or time to burn completely, which then ignites in the exhaust system, giving the burbles. Retarding the ignition timing more aggressively and adding even more fuel would give you more aggressive burbles or even flames. But be very careful with how far you push it because you could seriously damage your engine. And just keep it tasteful. Subtle burbles are a nice touch, but these... <laughs> are just annoying, okay? And keep in mind, every car is gonna be different, every ECU is gonna be different. For example, a lot of ECUs are pre-programmed to cut fuel on overrun. So regardless of what values you put in those cells, it wouldn't add any fuel, because you're just on overrun. In that case, you have to turn off or disable the fuel cut to make it work. And that's it, that's how burbles on D-cell happen and that's how you can tune for it. Once again, don't mess with your ECU unless you know what you're doing. And for the love of God, like I keep saying this, keep it, tasteful it's a fine line and let me know in the comments if you're trying to get a burble tune and on what car i'm actually curious to see how many of them are going to be bmws and volkswagens speaking of comments i'm going to end off this video by reading and answering some of your comments what program or software can i use for this i had a lot of people asking that same question in the comments of that video you see the standalone ecus have their own thing like link ecu has its own thing Haltech has its own thing Megascore has its own thing. It's Tuner Studios or whatever. So those are pretty straightforward. But to reflash your stock ECU is gonna be car or platform specific 80% of the time. For example, if it's a BMW you're trying to tune, you're looking at Inpa, JM, Garage Flasher, Galetto, Rom Raider, and stuff like that. And you would typically need what's called a DCAN cable, which is pretty much just an OBD2 to USB interface. Just do your research and see what's out there for your car and platform. Anonymous Caveman says, I have two questions. One, I have a K-Series engine, doesn't have an aux sensor, so does that mean I wouldn't be able to tune it without risking it blowing up? No, you can tune an engine without an aux sensor, there's no problem. As long as your tuner knows what they're doing and they make changes in small increments, you should be fine. Usually if they're experienced enough, they can hear the knock and they back out to prevent damage. But I do recommend getting an aux sensor because it's so much cheaper than rebuilding an engine, just to be safe. Second question, Will tuning a car increase power, but also increase fuel usage? You could ask your tuner to give you better mileage, but most of the time to get more power, you're gonna end up burning more fuel. So you're gonna lose fuel mileage. Chris the Crispy, that desk do be shaky. It's a cheap Ikea dining table. What do you want? Can you up the boost without getting a tune? Yes, mess around with the wastegate spring and you get more boost, but you're gonna end up running lean and eventually blow up. What about tuning without any dyno test drive? I had my BMW tuned without moving the vehicle. The tuner told me that it wasn't necessary. It's possible, yeah. Using an off-the-shelf tune that was downloaded online, you just cross your fingers that it was rigorously tested and your altitude and the fuel grade you're using was taken into account. But usually those off-the-shelf tunes are conservative enough to allow for some variation. Thanks, DJ Khaled. Did you just call me fat? All right, that's it. Make sure to like or even dislike, you know? Just let me know how I'm doing. And subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the noti too so you don't miss any of my new videos. And thanks for watching.